coal. You may have seen coal or heard about it. It is as hard as stone and is black in color. Coal is one of the fuels used to cook food. Earlier, it was used in railway engines to produce steam to run the engine. It is also used in thermal power plants to produce electricity. Coal is also used as a fuel in various industries. Petroleum You know that petrol is used as a fuel in automobiles such as motorcycles or scooters and cars. Heavy motor vehicles, trucks and tractors run on diesel. Petrol and diesel are obtained from a natural resource called petroleum. Do you know how petroleum is formed? Well, it's quite interesting actually. Petroleum was formed from organisms living in the sea. No, not kidding. This is true. Now, as these organisms died, their bodies settled at the bottom of the sea and got covered with layers of sand and clay. Over millions of years, absence of air, high temperature and high pressure transformed the dead organisms into petroleum and natural gas. This figure shows the deposits of petroleum and natural gas. You see that the layer containing petroleum oil and gas is above that of water. Why is it so? We know that oil and gas are lighter than water and do not mix with it. That's why. Now the world's first oil well was drilled in Pennsylvania in USA in 1859. Eight years later, in 1867, oil was struck at Makum in Assam in India. Oil is found in Assam, Gujarat, Mumbai High and in the river basins of Godavari and Krishna in India. Natural Gas Natural gas is a very important fossil fuel because it is easy to transport through pipes. Natural gas is stored under high pressure as compressed natural gas, that is CNG. Now CNG is used for power generation. It is now being used as a fuel for transport vehicles because it is less polluting. It is a cleaner fuel. The great advantage of CNG is that it can be used directly for burning in homes and factories where it can be supplied through pipes. Such a network of pipelines exists in Vadodara in Gujarat, some parts of Delhi and other places. Natural gas is also used as a starting material for the manufacture of a number of chemicals and fertilizers. India has vast reserves of natural gas. In our country, natural gas has been found in Tripura, Rajasthan, Maharashtra and in the Krishna Godavari Delta. Importance of Ozone Layer Elemental oxygen is normally found in the form of a diatomic molecule. However, in the upper reaches of the atmosphere, a molecule containing three atoms of oxygen is found. This would mean a formula of O3 
and this is called ozone. Unlike the normal diatomic molecule of oxygen, ozone is poisonous and we are lucky that it is not stable nearer to the Earth's surface. But this poisonous gas, now it performs an essential function also where it is found. What it does is, it absorbs harmful radiations from the sun. Now this prevents those harmful radiations from reaching the surface of the earth where they may damage many forms of life. So ozone is important to us, is it not? However, many man-made compounds like the CFCs, that is, chlorofluorocarbons, were found to persist in the atmosphere. Once they reached the ozone layer, they would react with the ozone molecules. This resulted in a reduction of the ozone layer. Recently, they have discovered a hole in the ozone layer above the Antarctica. How this hole can be repaired is what everyone in the world is thinking about. Regulation of Natural Resources A constant interaction between the biotic and abiotic components of the biosphere is called biogeochemical cycles. Let us study first biogeochemical cycle, that is the water cycle. You have seen how the water evaporates from the water bodies and subsequent condensation of this water vapor leads to rain. But we don't see the seas and oceans drying up, do we? the water returning to these water bodies. The whole process in which water evaporates and falls on the land as rain and later flows back into the sea via rivers is known as the water cycle. Now this cycle is not as straightforward and simple as this statement seems to imply. All of the water that falls on the land does not immediately flow back into the sea. Some of it seeps into the soil and becomes part of the underground reservoir of fresh water. Some of this underground water finds its way to the surface through springs. Or we bring it to the surface for our use through wells or tube wells. Water is also used by terrestrial animals and plants for various life processes, is it not? In fact, we also use water quite a lot, don't we? Let us look at another aspect of what happens to water during the water cycle. As you know, water is capable of dissolving a large number of substances. As water flows through or over rocks containing soluble minerals, some of them get dissolved in the water. Thus, rivers carry many nutrients from the land to the sea and these are used by the marine organisms. The Nitrogen Cycle Nitrogen gas makes up 78% of our atmosphere. And nitrogen is also a part of many molecules essential for life, like proteins, nucleic acids, DNA and RNA, and some vitamins. Nitrogen is found in other biologically important compounds such as alkaloids and urea also. Nitrogen is thus an essential nutrient for all life forms 
and life would be simple if all these life forms could use the atmospheric nitrogen directly, wouldn't it be? However, other than a few forms of bacteria, life forms are not able to convert the comparatively inert nitrogen molecule into forms like nitrates and nitrites which can be taken up and used to make the required molecules. These nitrogen-fixing bacteria may be free-living or may be associated with some species of dicot plants. Most commonly, the nitrogen-fixing bacteria are found in the roots of legumes in special structures called root nodules. Other than these bacteria, during lightning, the high temperatures and pressures created in the air convert nitrogen into oxides of nitrogen. These oxides dissolve in water to give nitric and nitrous acids and fall on land along with rain. These are then utilized by various life forms. So the lightning which happens also has a purpose, does it not? Plants generally take up nitrates and nitrites and convert them into amino acids which are used to make proteins. These proteins and other complex compounds are subsequently consumed by animals. Once the animal or the plant dies, other bacteria in the soil convert the various compounds of nitrogen back into nitrates and nitrites. A different type of bacteria converts the nitrates and nitrites into elemental nitrogen. Thus, there is a nitrogen cycle in nature in which nitrogen passes in the soil and water, which gets converted to more complex molecules in living beings and back again to the simple nitrogen molecule in the atmosphere. This is the nitrogen cycle, the carbon cycle. Carbon is found in various forms on the earth. It occurs in the elemental form as diamonds and graphite. In the combined state, it is found as carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, as carbonate and hydrogen carbonate salts in various minerals, while all life forms are based on carbon-containing molecules like proteins, carbohydrates, fats, nucleic acids and vitamins. The endoskeletons and exoskeletons of various animals are also formed from carbonate salts. Carbon is incorporated into life forms through the basic process of photosynthesis which is performed in the presence of sunlight by all life forms that contain chlorophyll. This process converts carbon dioxide from the atmosphere or dissolved in water into glucose molecules. These glucose molecules are either converted into other substances or used to provide energy for the synthesis of other biologically important molecules. The utilization of glucose to provide energy to living things involves the process of respiration in which oxygen may or may not be used to convert glucose back into carbon dioxide. 
Now this carbon dioxide then goes back into the atmosphere. Another process that adds to the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is the process of combustion where fuels are burnt to provide energy for various needs like heating, cooking, transportation and industrial processes. In fact, the percentage of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is said to have doubled since the Industrial Revolution when human beings started burning fossil fuels on a very large scale. Carbon, like water, is thus recycled repeatedly through different forms by the various physical and biological activities. And this is called the carbon cycle. The oxygen cycle. Oxygen is a very abundant element on our earth. It is found in the elemental form in the atmosphere to the extent of 21%. It also occurs extensively in the combined form on the Earth's crust as well as also in the air in the form of carbon dioxide. In the crust, it is found as the oxides of most metals and silicon and also as carbonate, sulphate, nitrate and other minerals. It is also an essential component of most biological molecules like carbohydrates, proteins, nucleic acids and fats or lipids. But when we talk of the oxygen cycle, we are mainly referring to the cycle that maintains the levels of oxygen in the atmosphere. Oxygen from the atmosphere is used up in three processes, namely combustion, respiration and in the formation of oxides of nitrogen. Oxygen is returned to the atmosphere in only one major process. Do you know what that is? Well, it is photosynthesis. And this forms the broad outline of the oxygen cycle in nature. Though we usually think of oxygen as being necessary to life in the process of respiration, it might be of interest to you to learn that some forms of life, especially bacteria, are poisoned by elemental oxygen. In fact, even the process of nitrogen-fixing bacteria does not take place in the presence of oxygen. Hmm, this is something new.